Hello folks, today I'll be bringing you a new build for the Railmaster class. I've decided to call this build the Conductor of Flames and before I go into any details I want to note don't mind the skill setup, the skill points you're seeing on here on that tree. Ideally for this build this should be maxed out and this is uh, suggested to be maxed out in certain cases. So for now just uh, pay attention to the core skills, those five skills we have here. Those are our main skills, I've left this slot empty, so you can put a different skill from the suggestions I'm going to make throughout this video. And I'm gonna show you some gear choices and as usual finish off with some video gameplay. For this build I've decided to go with a blasting charge flamethrower car, hammer spin, shotgun car and build train as active. I believe all those skills are a good synergy in between themselves. Shotgun car and flamethrower car both uh, have decent actives uh, and can do some nice damage. Uh, especially flamethrower car on a boss is kind of like melting the bosses. Where a shotgun car is uh, good when the enemies kind of stay in a line as it has a piercing projectile active but the passive uh, is also pretty neat when the enemies come up close so if, you, if you're planning on keeping the enemies uh, at bay maybe this may not be as good but it's uh, currently probably the best option for this build Ideally I wanted to try a mortar car with a flamethrower car but the way the system works it doesn't uh, wow those. What I would like to see, I would like to see an option where we can pick any two cars and just mix and match them. A system where there is a group called uh, train cars and you can pick uh, two at the same time, any two at the same time from this group of skills. So, without further ado, let's keep talking about uh, Blasting Charge and Hammer Spin. Why I decided to pick those. Blasting Charge, as you see, boosts all skills in the lineage tree, including Hammer Spin, or Pound, or Ghost Train, if you decide to pick some of those at uh, certain levels. Even Flying Picks. Uh, and it boosts itself by boosting the lineage skill damage. And while you max it out, uh, you get uh, a boost to the damage vulnerability that you apply to the to the people who you're fighting. So as you can see, this is a maxed out blasting charge in the two tip, 101% weapon damage uh, dealt from the blast, and additional 85.4% uh, vulnerability to damage for six seconds. Hammer spin is our great escape skill. It uh, swings the hammer in an AoE, knocks back enemies around you and gives you a movement speed boost of 50% for 2 seconds. But the good thing is if you're using a rail hammer, this will also increase your rail hammer damage uh, by 100%.8. So most uh, rail masters would go for a rail hammer unless uh, you're unlucky and can't find a good one then I'd suggest using a sword and probably an offhand if you can find a good offhand that gives you bonuses for the Rail Masters. Currently the Rail Masters can't drop focus items so you have to get one from a different character. So you can try using a shield if you want to. And there is build train, we can't go without build train and it has a good uh, passive bonus, passive damage to all train cars. And for this what uh, you can either put shield car or ghost train or pound. You can even go for something like flying picks if you really think you want that extra endurance recharge rate. I personally wouldn't uh, take flying picks uh, leveled up unless I pick ghost train for this build. If I'm only using busting charge as an endurance waster. I don't think that extra half endurance per second would help you because the flat is 1 endurance per second this gives you a 0 0.504 per second so just say half an endurance per second 
This one you could pick uh, for sure if you think uh, you would like the extra stun you could pick it, place it here. But my suggestion would be taking this skill, putting it here and maxing out flying picks. This is just my suggestion and uh, that gets you to 1, 2, 3, 4 skills at level 12. Then it turns into 5, 6, 7, 8 skills at level 12 and you can probably either dump all the points uh, into, into pound for damage reduction in melee or dump them in shield car for damage when near your train if you think you'll be standing near your train quite often. Although another option would be to not take ghost train, to not take ghost picks, uh, flying picks. To max out uh, shield car and to max out pound and then just put the remaining four skill points in whatever you decide maybe ghost train for the passive alternatively you can max out ghost train keep it as a passive only zero in flying picks uh, max out uh, shield car and put the remaining four skill points in pound just remember there's 8 skills at level 12 and 1 skill at level 4. So if you decide to go level 12 here, 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 that's 5 skills level 12. 6 with blasting charge and hammer spin. Uh, 7 actually with hammer spin, 6 with blasting charge and 7 with hammer spin I wanted to say. 8 with ghost train and just uh, 4 with pound. 4 points with pound. Ghost Rain is nice because it will give you healing after using Blasting Charge and Hammer Spin. So my ideal suggestion for you if you decide not to use Ghost Train as an active, use it as a passive. It is amazing to have that extra healing. And especially if you're using uh, something like active uh, shotgun and flamethrower, you won't have the active shield car. So you could use that extra tankiness from the healing that comes with Ghost Train. I think this pretty much sums up everything uh, regarding the skills. You could get a Sword Smash as well if you want and put it here if you're using this Relic Weapon. Uh, the Flaming Destroyer. But I'm not uh, saying that it's a must have to use the Flaming Destroyer. I also use it just for my other build which I mostly play. On this guy but yeah let's just uh, quickly move on to the gear choices and then see what we can do about the gameplay demo for the gear choices as most of my builds uh, focus about around doing uh, most DPS than being defensive builds uh, I'd uh, suggest as usual chest armor physical damage bonus and if you can get extra HP with that uh, that's fine on the leg armor again try to get the flat physical damage bonus and keep it leveled up uh, if you can find something that's within your level for a few levels just uh, either replace it with something else or just keep it I usually keep my physical damage gear until I find a replacement for it uh, for the gloves you could go for attack speed if you plan on using basic attacks sure go ahead uh, and do that uh, I'd suggest using uh, stuff with two additional bolts or even four additional bolts fired on shock if you can find a good voltaic sword or voltaic uh, staff or railham or whatever staffs are currently glitchy and they have shit tons of attack speed compared to other weapons even compared to swords uh, which are supposed to be faster so the base attack speed of the staff is nice so while you're leveling if you find a good staff use it if you find a good rail hammer use it if you can't find a good two-handed weapon either go for a focus item and sword or sword and shield so what you could get for the helmet is either do the gear work uh, route and try to always keep it to the maximum amount of gear work you can get or try to get other bonuses that uh, you would benefit from such as probably well not health per second avoid health per second at any cost unless uh, it comes attached to something uh, with a good bonus that you really want and need then you might sacrifice that extra mod slot for the health per second 
a rig in. For the shoulders, of course, uh, you would uh, probably think crit hit chance is good, and it is kind of good, but uh, at least it's better than crit hit damage because this class, in order to get a viable crit hit chance and crit hit damage build, he needs 10% crit hit chance here or even more than 10 and more than 10 from here and even if he gets a uh, 5 point something or 6 crit hit chance on the shoulders it will still be under 30% crit hit chance so I personally would avoid uh, crit hit chance I'm not a fan of, uh, of uh, gold work either so let's see if I can show you just some other examples that have something different over there Although basic attacks are pretty neat on basic attacks are pretty neat on a, a rail master, especially if you're using your rail hammers often. So I try to go for attack speed on the gloves if you can find something like this. It would be pretty neat, but uh, as you can see, those shoulders have two seconds poison duration. So this is something nice if you're using poison and uh, poison is pretty neat as well by itself this is nice on the helm and this is what I was talking about endurance again per second is a good bonus so having having that there might be a priority for you compared to gear work although I'd suggest uh, if you can get gear work and endurance again per second you're gonna be very happy although when you're using the train build Probably you wouldn't need much endurance as you see those skills, the active train skills don't use endurance. Hammer spin uses charges and not endurance so you're stuck with just blasting charge using endurance unless you decide to go for a build with cost train as I suggested in my previous uh, section of the build. Uh, what else could be good? Uh, on the boots you could probably get some special bonuses but Health regen per second and gold work, work is uh, something that I wouldn't go for. Let's see if those have something useful. Those are actually mage boots. Uh, maybe I won't be able to show you some boots with good bonuses. Not for this class yet, but just take whatever is best, whatever complements your skills. If you find items that complement your skills, the ones that you're using in your core setup, go ahead for those, keep them, use them, enjoy them. Uh, this is a nice example of uh, mixed gloves with uh, both attack speed and gear work. So yeah, if you find yourself using basic attacks, try to get attack speed mixed with gear work or attack speed mixed with two bolts fired on shock. Or if you don't uh, use basic attack, just uh, get more bolts on shock or bolt on shock uh, mixed with gear work and maybe some extra defense. Uh, on the weapon. I wouldn't suggest going for a crit hit chance build, maybe something like this would be amazing, flat damage only on the weapon. But uh, since they included electric damage and chance to shock and bolts fired on shock, always try to get gear with bolts on shock and chance to shock, even if it's just the sword that gives you chance to shock or another mace or whatever weapon, uh, it's gonna be good to have that little bit of chance to shock. And I've managed to stack up my my bolts fired on shock all the way up to 8 sometimes I've never gotten it more than 8 but I think it's possible if you get 4 from here 2 from here, 2 from here maybe you can even get 4 from this uh, piece who knows I don't uh, for sure haven't tried, uh, I mean I've tried but I haven't managed to get it for the pet I usually get something with block chance on the pet color and little studs as the pet tax, even if it's out leveled uh, compared to my content I'm doing, I'm using it not for the physical damage for the pet but for the crit hit chance and crit hit damage bonus. And the chance to bleed, bleed is not bad, especially if you're using other types of uh, damage like poison uh, and uh, electric and fire and so on. It's good to have some extra dots stacking up on the monsters. So I'm not saying don't go for crit hit chance, but I'm saying if you have an option to take something else, uh, go for it. Because crit hit chance I think becomes useful when you have over 30. 
and currently with the way things are with this class you don't have any sources of crit hit chance from the passives unlike the the forge class does you can try and carry shields for in case you encounter some undead one of those shields would also be good you, all you need to do is just equip this shield and you immediately get around uh, 5.6k at level 50 defense versus undead which is more than enough to have uh, decent uh, undead defense and shields like this against hivids even though it doesn't give too much chance to block just the, the defense against hivid and poison from it is amazing just from this shield 600 uh, a 6000 hivid 1.4k poison so even with mixed gear I can now with this shield uh, go and do hivid frontier without worrying about the defense of course shields like this good for goblin defense not so good against fire but I personally prefer having two times chance uh, to block unless you're using a sword like uh, where is that uh, wing, uh, wing blade this wing blade can give you around 20% chance to block on a good roll so this probably could stack up well with uh, with a shield with good block chance I heard something about 40% uh, being the limit so let's see about this let me pick this uh, wing blade and something with a lot of block chance my highest block chance uh, 21.6 uh, 21.7 ok 0.1 and won't make a difference so let's equip this one with 20 let's equip this one and let's see if we cap it at uh, level 40 the block chance it's not even showing up or oh there we go we cap it at 40 so keep in mind the, the max block chance you can get is 40 so you can cap it with just a single chance to block bonus and a blade like this or this even but if you if you want to try and get as close as possible without the wing blade with just one shield try to go for a shield with two times the block chance bonus so as I think that's pretty much it about the gear so let's move on to the gameplay demo I'll show you different variations while showing this build so this is basically me killing some hybrids to show you how the build works I'll show you first the core skills and gameplay with those and just to see how per se this burning uh, melts enemies just by itself and then you can probably just I uh, want to show you how the cars itself just the passives of the cars melt the enemies not completely melt but you can see they pop them blast them just with those two cars Um, without me using active skills uh, it's not so bad to, to deal with the trash it's a bit slow because I have to move around with the train keep building tracks but when we want to melt something we just use two four and that's without even using blasting charge at the start so if you want to do something like using blasting charge there we go blasting charge then number two number four and that's kind of was it for this uh, group of elites only one was uh, left after I used those uh, skills I could have finished him off with hammer spin hammer spin is good because it can help you just move away from the train and rebuild it without having to wait for it to come all the way if you want to do something like that it uh, gives you an opportunity to do it that way just move away and rebuild the train somewhere else And as you can see, this legendary got melted as soon as my train arrived next to it. And Hammer Spin is also your knockback for the enemies and your escape skill for when you need some extra escape. Keep in mind that when I'm playing this build, uh, I've got uh, most of my passives set up to, to something different, so what you're seeing here is not what the build would actually feel like the build would be better synergized it will have more cooldown reduction 
because uh, it implements a max level as I suggested max level mortar car so all those active train skill cooldowns would be better but you're seeing uh, for me a maxed out ghost train combined with maxed out plastic charge so I'll show you later on what we can do if we put the ghost train here actually I'll do something like that So we can do it that way. Although maybe this way is better. So yeah, if you want to mix it up with the ghost train, I'll show you now how it works. And keep in mind we have flying picks maxed out so all our endurance charges with half an endurance per second more. So we want to burn this one and we want to go strain run on it. Actually I kept pressing number 4 because I'm used for my uh, ghost train to be on my number 4. So let's try now burning and ghost train. Yeah you can see it pretty much destroys stuff when you stack burning uh, under the flamethrower card with the, with the ghost train. And especially if you had a blasting charge before that. So this kind of could be a very fun, very fun build, uh, the way it's built up, if you want to get a Flaming Destroyer. Although you can just uh, not get anything from Lineage, but the build won't be as powerful if you want to just save your skill points for when they add new skills. But we don't even have an estimate for when they would have some more skills for for the different classes, for the different trees. So I'm assuming that uh, a respect system would come before that so it's just better to just implement those skill points in whatever skills you think uh, you would want for this build. You can still get Ghost Train without maxing out flying picks uh, but I suggest if you decide to get Ghost Train as, a, as an active skill just max out flying picks. As for something else that you could get, as I said you can max out shield car if you want more damage near your train. Or you can even max out those 4 skills, 5, 6, 7 with ghost train, 8 with uh, shield car and not go for flying picks. So that way you could still have some, some extra damage while standing uh, near your train and that would apply to ghost train as well. So that's not bad. As you can see, the, the build pretty much destroys enemies, if used correctly. I'm kind of not the best at using this build, because uh, I'm not good at micromanaging the train, keeping it around me all the time. But someone would be probably very effective with that build, when they've been playing it for a while. I'm used to just playing my lineage build where Ghost Train combines with Blasting Charge, uh, Pound, Hammer Spin. So basically the shotgun car is uh, good for spamming, for sniping single enemies or for sniping enemies in a while uh, without using any endurance and it can go well with uh, follow up for a Ghost Train or a leading into ghost train where the enemies have lined up so it can both lead up to ghost train or follow up ghost train and if I call the train here just one flamethrower gets rid of all those uh, squishy little larva monsters And here I just uh, told it to attack on the wrong spot and yeah, try not to do that. Because the flamethrower car active, once you activate it, it only blasts there where your cursor was. It can't just keep automatically changing, whereas the passive ones uh, can do something like that. They can change their direction of uh, attack, so they're pretty neat. 
Uh, also, just uh, re regardless the relic weapons, pick whatever you want to use, whatever you can get. It doesn't matter for this build. Ideally, you would be using probably a flaming destroyer, so you would have some extra burning to stack up. But even a bane would be nice. I would really like to try a bane with this build, because it would be amazing synergy to have both the burning and the poison stacks. And the poisonous bolt shooting off while your train is just annihilating stuff with the shotgun passive and the uh, flamethrower passive and active skills. As you can see, this boss was pretty much uh, two shot by the flamethrower and ghost train without even using uh, blasting charge. But I was using a might shrine, so that's also a factor. So that's pretty much it about the gameplay demo. If you like the video, make sure to, to hit up those buttons, the like button, the subscribe button. Feel free to share it. Any good press for me is uh, nice because I'm trying to grow my channel and you will definitely help me. And uh, stay tuned for my next video tomorrow. It will be another Forge Class video. So keep it cool guys and see you next time. Goodbye.